Hey, what's up? My name is Grant Kenoki. I'm a singer, songwriter, producer, and artist, and you're listening to Power 98.5. We don't play the social game. We are social. Power 98.5. You're listening to Power 98.5, powered by United Angels Dream, your number one resource for public relations, entertainment, and multimedia. Contact them today at unitedangelsdream.com. Hi, this is Dan Aykroyd. He's progressive. He's beautiful. He's thoughtful. He's intelligent. He's powerful. He's positive. He is Stephen Cuoco on Power 98.5 Satellite Radio. Empowering listeners from the U.S. to the U.K. Live on air with Stephen Cuoco. Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening. You are listening to Live on Air with Stephen Cuoco on Power 98.5 Satellite Radio. You can tune in to all things Power 98.5 on the Power 98.5 iOS or Android app, Alexa. Go to the power985.com. Got any questions, comments, you want to submit any suggestions, insights, Click the little tick down at the bottom right-hand corner of the website, or if you're on a mobile app, and send us your message. We have with us today George Shakiris. George Shakiris is an American actor. He is best known for his appearance in a 1961 film version of West Side Story as uh, Bern- uh, Bernardo Nunez, the leader of the Sharks Gang for which he won both the Academy Award for Best Supporting Actor and the Golden Globe Award for Best Supporting Actor Motion Picture. With us right now, Mr. George Shakiris. Good morning, George. Hi, good morning. Good to be with you. <laughs> you too. And you've got a book that's that's currently out or coming out. Tell us more about that. Yes, I do. Well, let's see. We did, I did this book last year with a wonderful writer whose name is Lindsay Harrison. Um, I've forgotten exactly. I think it came out March of last year. Uh, and it's been, I've been doing promotion on and off, uh, since then. Uh, it's called, you won't be surprised. <laughs> it's called My West Side Story. Uh, the, uh, the publisher thought that would be a good title and I thought it made sense. So yes, I, I it's, it's a memoir and it sort of covers you know, life in general and career and so on. It was, it was, it was, uh, it was interesting, kind of fun to do at the same time. Have you, did you always think that your career, your life was going to lead in this moment to acquire the award you have now being an author? God, no, not at all. There's so many things that I think about. I mean, winning an Academy Award, Rita and Mars and I having our footprints in Grumman's Chinese. I mean, different things you, you, you would never think uh, could happen, but very nicely they did happen. So you never know what to expect and you never really expect anything. You just work and, and uh, uh, comment on the work and, and hope that that is, is good. What's incredible is you uh, you were born in Norwood, Ohio. Your family yeah. are Greek immigrants from Turkey. That's right. Yes. Uh-huh. Yeah, yeah. My 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 parents came over. My father came over when he, uh, with his parents when he was about uh, twelve, and uh, with his brother as well. He was two years older. And when my father and his brother, my uncle, were of varying age, when they were respectively both like I think twenty and twenty two, mm-hmm. my grandfather went back to the the village in Turkey, a Greek village in Turkey that they were had come from, to find uh, two girls to marry his two boys. <laughs> So, uh, and that's what he did. He went and found two, uh, it turned out, really wonderful young women. And uh, they met at the train station in Florida, of all places, And because uh, that's where my father, my grandfather had been working uh, as well. And they met at the train station. My my mother tells me, she remembers uh, my grandfather saying, because he didn't know which boy was going to go with which girl. And so he said, this one is for you. And this one is for you. And that's how my parents met. You know, so it was, uh, I, I just love that story. It, what's incredible is you're eight, you're one of eight siblings. Now, where do you fall within that? Are you the oldest, the middle, the youngest? 
I, I'm, pr I'm pretty much halfway. Yes, uh huh. There were four older and three younger. I think I've got that right. Um, uh, so yes, I was. I fell in in the middle. <laughs> What was life like growing up, being one of eight, Long Beach, California, is where your family moved to back in 1944 yes. when you were 12. How much has life changed since your life in Long Beach to now 2022? Wow. Well, life has changed a lot because the world has changed a lot, it seems. Because, um, you know, listen, growing up in, in uh, Long Beach, going to junior high school and finding some high school in, in Long Beach and graduating from high school and then going to city college as well for a few semesters. I mean, life was uh, sweet and, and uh, uncomplicated. And when you're younger, you don't, you know, you just take things as they are. And I... I I, I luckily my my brothers and sisters and I were very lucky to be born in the family that we were born into because my parents were two of the most beautiful people you would ever 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 want to meet. So we, we grew up in a in a, a loving household. I didn't think of it at the time, but looking back, I realized how blessed we were to have uh, the background that we did because it was. Uh, uh, we, we were loved. We were supported. We, they were. My parents were happy to help us do whatever we wanted to do. So when I took an interest in, I didn't know it was show business. But when I took an interest in dancing and singing and things like that, um, my parents were totally supportive of that and didn't think I was being silly. You know. So it, it, it was. Uh, it, when I look back on those those years, you know, junior high school, high school, it was it was a a really beautiful, sweet. Uh, uh, uncomplicated time. So uh, it's it's just you look back on it like it's just a lovely, lovely, lovely dream. It, it was it just couldn't have been better. What's been the best role for you that you've ever had the opportunity to star in, George? Well, listen, I, I, I've been lucky because I've gotten to do some wonderful things in theater as well. And, you know, theater people don't really know much about because it doesn't get any exposure the way film does. But uh, in, in film, there are three films that I that I got to make that I really loved making. And one of the first was, of course, was West Side Story. And uh, then I did a, an Italian film called Bebo's Girl with Claudia Cardinale. That was a beautiful experience. That, that was an Italian film that just it was a, a great a, a true story and i loved working with her and with the italian director um then i also did a french film called the young girls of rochefort a musical gene kelly was in it as well uh, that was what but and then theater i got to do m butterfly i did that in london i paid the passion of dracula of all things uh at the queen's theater in london as well so i've had wonderful experiences in the theater as well and again uh, you know it's interesting your question is so good because uh, the most important part whether it's film or theater is the material is it a, is it well written is it a good play and uh, that doesn't always happen it didn't happen to me always either but the times that it did happen were just memorable and uh, made everything worthwhile you know are you ready to go back in time with us back to the oscars back to when you won best supporting actor for your performance in west side story at yeah. the 34th academy awards in 1962 right, yeah Presented yeah. by Shirley Jones. Oh, God, Shirley, yes. Shirley became a good friend as well, uh, you know, coincidentally. Yeah, I, I, I remember that evening very well because uh, Rita uh, Moreno and I attended uh, together, and we were good friends, of course. We've been good friends ever since. Uh, but I remember the, uh, the, you know, there was a limousine that was going to take us to the awards and all of that. And I had my tux, or I probably had tails for that night. Mm. And anyway, the, the car came and got me first. Then we went to get Rita. And as she was coming out the door, she said, I'm practicing my loser's face. <laughs> <laughs> so, 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 so I, and what I remember about that night, of course, is how the good fortune I had and the thing that made the evening so so perfect was because we had the same good fortune. And they, we we went together. We got lucky together. We had a great time at the party afterwards. It was it, you, you couldn't ask for a more perfect evening. It was it was tremendous. We are going to play here. Here's what we're going to do, George. We're going to go down. uh memory lane and we're going to play the clip of you winning this award are you ready to go back in time and hear this sure that's fun <laughs> all right here we go george all right so once again we've got george shakiris winning 
his award for Best Supporting Actor for his performance in West Side Story at the 34th Academy Awards in 1962, presented by Shirley Jones. We come now to the award for Best Supporting Actor. Those in contention are fellows who played a juvenile delinquent, a Nazi, a gangster, a gambler, and a pool room hustler. <laughs> now you know why I turned down the title role in the story of Albert Schweitzer. <laughs> Ross Russell's going to play it. <laughs> to present this award, here is last year's Oscar winner for Best Supporting Actress, Miss Shirley Jones. <laughs> Shirley, why is it that you and I have never made a picture together? Well, Bob, you know that old saying, you can't win them all? Yes. Well, you can't lose them all either. I've come close. (laughs) The nominees for best performance by an actor in a supporting role are George Chakiris in West Side Story, Montgomery Clift in Judgment at Nuremberg, Peter Falk in Pocket Full of Miracles, Jackie Gleason in The Hustler, George C. Scott in The Hustler. And the winner's name is in this envelope. The winner is George Chakiris in West Side Story. I don't think I'll try and talk too much. I just want to say thank you very, very much. Thank you. What was it like to go to hear that moment again, George? <laughs> well, uh, I'm, I'm reminded, by the way, it was Bob Hope who introduced, Bob Hope who introduced uh, Shirley. Um, and what I thought of, boy, it takes a while to get from your seat up to the stage. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, and uh, you know, clearly... I had nothing prepared. I didn't know what to say, so I just said thank you. It was probably the shortest speech on record. Rita's uh, acceptance speech was just as short as mine, so neither of us were 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 prepared. But it was, uh, it's um, it, it's like I don't. Want, it's so corny to say it, but it you, it it's impossible to describe uh, what what that feels like. I can never come up with adjectives that are uh, appropriate, but it's just uh, you're in a daze. <laughs> And just, but at, but at the same time, you know that something really quite terrific has happened, and so you're on a cloud as well. It's it was it was tremendous. And again, the thing that made it so beautiful was the fact that Rita and I attended together. We've been friends all these years, and we both felt lucky together. So it was just uh, uh, just a beautiful evening. And that getting up to the stage was takes the time, but uh, <laughs> uh, but there it is. There it is. Yeah, you looked really dashing. In that moment. <laughs> well, yeah, you know what? It helps to be younger. <laughs> <laughs> you, you always look better when you're younger. <laughs> well, it's it's the Greek genes that really have kept you looking timeless. Well, well you know, I've, um, uh, again, uh, my, my parents uh, both had uh, serious longevity. My mother was 104 when, when we lost her. Her father was 107, so... Listen, I don't know how much longer I've got, but hopefully I can follow in those footsteps. But uh, so, uh, and also, you know, when my, when my mother and father first met at the train station in Florida, my mother later said, "She said I'm so glad he, I'm so glad I got the good looking one." Mm. <laughs> so, so my father was a, a good looking man, and and my mother was just lovely. So we all got lucky uh, because of them. Being that you're Greek. Uh, Bernardo, he, he in, in that character, in that role, he is mm-hmm. Puerto Rican. He's a migrant right. um, mm-hmm. and founder and leader of the Sharks. Was there any difference? What was time like 
back then uh, playing a role that is of ethnicity? Was it uh, very accepting back then? How open was the world when it came to cinema and theater and film for um, ethnic roles or ethnic portrayed roles? I think it was very open and very, very uh, accepting. Uh, just as a reminder, Anthony Quinn, a Mexican playing Zorro the Greek, a kind of reverse situation, if you like. That was not unusual. You know, that that was that just, just was the way things happened. And it's gotten so political now. Unfortunately, I think the politics get in the way of people being creative. But at that time, uh, none of that crossed certainly never crossed my mind. I don't think it crossed anybody's mind. It just wasn't in the uh, the, the mindset of, uh, at the time. It's become very much in the mindset these last couple of years. And uh, I think that's very, I don't think that's a great thing because I think it limits people's creative uh, input and being, being able to work uh, to uh, think creatively as opposed to politically because it is a creative business and that's the creativity is what counts. And that's what allows people to achieve what they hope to achieve when they write, direct, act or whatever. Yeah, But at that time, None of that existed. I never thought of it. Never crossed my mind. I don't think it crossed anybody's mind. It just wasn't that way. Do you, do you know the difference or or where it may have changed or became disconnected uh, within the industry to where things are just so much more the way they are now, not as open? Well, I, I, I'm not really sure exactly. I, I, just like all of us, you hear things in bits and pieces. Uh, and I don't know if any of it is true because it's hearsay. But, for example, uh, we've gone with the wind and people thinking it should be uh, thrown away. There, uh, I remember that Queen Latifah, this is, I'm not saying this is true, just what I heard. Queen Latifah was of the mind that it should be abandoned, should be put away. And Whoopi Goldberg, there they're both black thought no it's history you, you don't throw this stuff away you have to learn with it and, and live with it and of course uh, i think Whoopi goldberg was the one who was right you don't uh, throw away history because it's history uh and you don't uh, uh not appreciate people's work uh so much goes into making a film whether it's the directing the acting the producer whatever producing you you have to appreciate people's efforts uh, and uh, on based on what how, what the time was, at. but um, but in most recently, and again, this is conjecture. By the way, I have not seen the new West Side Story yet. I don't know why I haven't, but but I haven't, so I don't know. I have nothing to say about it. Mm-hmm. But uh, I seem, I, I think, in what I've heard, bits and pieces, that uh, uh, if this may not be correct, but I'll say it anyway. I think Steven Spielberg made made a a, a big point uh, that he was going to cast Hispanic roles with Hispanic people, and uh, and that's great. But but uh, I think he could have made his film without making that statement, and therefore bring it to everybody's attention. Because now I think um, um, so. It may have. I think it's, it started in different ways. Maybe the, the Gone with the Wind is one example. There. Are, Tons of examples. If you really want to go down that road, it's not just uh, Gone with the Wind and West Side Story or anything else. There are so many uh, uh, films with different subjects that people would, will deal with differently now than they did at that time. It doesn't mean that thing was wrong. It's just that the mindset was different. I think to, I, I personally um, am not thrilled with. Uh, the over politicization, if I'm saying that word right, of what's going on today, because I, again, I think it limits people, and and and, and it it it, uh, it emphasizes differences in everybody, and I, so we're we're not different. We're all of the same planet, the same country, and we're we should we should all be uh, with each other and not having not separating into to categories or, or ethnicities or anything like that. I think we all have to be in this world and in this game uh, together. In your perspective, if you're comfortable to share, what I would really like to know, because you are seasoned, you're educated, your experience is profound throughout like several decades worth. Um, when it comes to the LGBT community and roles, yeah. 
I have never spoken with anyone who really either knows what they're talking about or has the experience. What are what is your thought, whether subjective or objective, through your personal experience, George? What what is life like for those that are of the LGBT community of of you know women and men that are gay when it means to cast for a role and to be in maybe portraying a role that is of a straight character. Is there any difference from the fifties and sixties and seventies to now? Has it gotten better? Is it not well, as open-minded? I'll tell, well, I, I don't know. I'll tell you what comes to mind. Cause I did watch the Academy Awards and I, I'm not going to say her name correctly. I don't think Adriana de Bose, who plays Anita in the new West Side Story. Uh, you know, she says she's the first game, what, however she, they say it, uh, and play, to play a straight role. And I thought, well, why are we ma- here? We go again. We're making such a big deal about this. Actors should be able to play any role that, that they're cast to play. Mm-hmm. And thinking should be broad enough to allow people to do that. A Rock Hudson, come on. I mean, the, the, the list goes on. It's endless. And this discussion could be, could really be endless as well. And it doesn't need to be. It, it all should be simpler and less complicated than than the world or maybe or than the entertainment business perhaps uh, tends to make it i i think uh, uh i'm not sure again because i don't go i don't bother with social media but it seems to me that social media has had an impact on people's thinking as well uh but 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 uh to, to try to answer your question I mean, uh, Montgomery Clift, and, and I'm saying this because I've never read a book about Montgomery Clift, but uh, he was uh, ev- evidently gay, but he, of course he plays straight parts. I mean, I think you would go through women and men, and it's, 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 it's absolutely correct that they should do that. They shouldn't, uh, is, now that Ariana DeBose has has told the world that she's gay does that mean she can never play a straight role she played a straight role in west side story so so i think that uh, hopefully will answer your question it's mm-hmm. just i think it's incorrect and it's wrong and it limits people it it, it shuts people out if you uh try to separate them uh with, with ethnicity or gender or anything like that they, people uh, an actor or an actress or performer should be able if they're properly cast to play any kind of part, whether it's Shakespeare, all kinds of roles in Shakespeare that are are, are gender uh, uh, focused. I'm saying that wrong, but um, it, it's it, it's a creative business, and so I think this the, the separation I think is it doesn't help anybody. So, and I understood what you meant by that, uh, George. I believe what you were trying to say is uh, more gender neutral. Potentially or so, if that's it. Uh, Say that again, sorry? I said what I heard or what I believe you were trying to say is like uh, for the career of the industry to be more um, maybe gender neutral or uh, open-minded in a way. And and here's the reason why I wanted to get your perspective and I really want to thank you is because um, sometimes I get asked if I know anyone for whether scripted or unscripted shows. I just received information actually yesterday, and it referenced specifically for an upcoming so, uh, reality TV show that they were looking for straight singles. And one of the things that I have brought up in conversation with casting directors or agents or or pe- some people in the industry, I said, I know people, but I was like, why does it need to be focused or why does the question or proposal need to be whether or not it's open for everyone is sometimes the verbiage is used or straight only or um, – or uh, or gay friendly, and I'm like, why does that reference have to be there? Because I know quite a few men and women that are of the LGBT community, but you would never uh-huh. know that they were gay, and they would be perfect for it. Or maybe they're open minded, maybe they're poly, maybe they're bi. And I was told several times, but by somebody very well known in the business who said to me many, many, many years ago, and I won't forget it said to me, gay does not sell. (laughs) Whether in music, TV, or film, gay does not sell. 
Well, if you make such a point of it, and then, then you know, there's all kinds of uh, um, what's the, um, people who uh, are uncomfortable with different things, whether they're uh, uncomfortable with somebody who's Japanese, they're uncomfortable with somebody who's from the South, there's somebody who, because of gender and, and, or ethnicity, it's, 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 it's a, it's a, it's it's wrong, and 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 to to uh, limit your casting to gay straight or or I'm, I'm sorry to gay something or gay white or straight white or I mean again you're you're accentuating the differences with 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 people and you're excluding a lot of people in the process. I mean creativity goes out the window with this kind of thinking, and it's. It's ultimately, I think, one of the things that I've noticed over the years, um, that people seem to be uh, uh, the most, uh, they're always curious to know somebody's sexuality. And I've always wondered why. Why does somebody care about that? It's so stupid. I've never paid any attention to that myself. It doesn't matter to me. It just, it really has never mattered. But, 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 but so it's too much. There's much too much focus on these kinds of things, in my opinion. Now, not just sexuality, but but uh, but ethnicity and all of that background, and so on, that that again separates people and excludes people. We shouldn't be. I think we shouldn't be doing that just in life, but we certainly shouldn't be doing it in the creative arts. You know, mm-hmm. what would you say to someone whether they're wanting to be a, a, a famous or popular or successful musician actor actress whatever it may be what words of encouragement would you have for them from what you've learned in your life george to possibly say you know what just make this simple for yourself well that that's a good way to start <laughs> make it simple for yourself because listen if you want to be uh, a, a performer in any of their various fields. What matters is uh, the performance, uh, being able to do be uh, up to that perform. Being uh, if you're going to be a singer, of course you have to work on your singing, your voice, material, songs, and and so on. If you're an actor, you have to work on work in the theater. Uh, if you're a dancer, you have to go to class. But everybody has to be prepared to do what it is they really want to do. Uh, and so preparation is, is important, and being ready for the uh, the any opportunity that might come. That's the point. And if an opportunity does come, just be grateful for it, and of course, always do the best you can. And I think most people always do the best that they can. It's it's just uh, that's I think that's what what people want to do. Any upcoming projects? In addition to your book, George, what else do we have to look forward to? Are you still going out for leading roles? Uh, oh, no. You know what? I, I, somebody asked me the other day if I'd retired. And I, I've never I've never thought of it. Things just happen. You don't have to think about retiring. Things – listen, I'm, I, I'll be 90 in September, so no, it's a different world for me. But I, I've never – I don't think of that in terms of, of work. And your interests change with time as well. And you also don't feel – at least I'm speaking for myself – I don't – I don't, uh, I'm not as ambitious, I'll say, as, as I was when I was younger. I don't feel, uh, the need, uh, to be performing out in front of people and, and so on. We get to do that in different ways. Uh, but so I'm, 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 I'm rambling on, but, um, uh, uh, I, I've lost track of where I started. Uh, but um, the, the thing, again, is, uh, and I, this has been true uh, uh, from the beginning, is in, uh, to be uh, ready and prepared for uh, any job uh, that, that you uh, are lucky enough to have. Uh, and uh, and just to be good to people, people around you, and, and hopefully, uh, and, and if you ever see something that's uh, not right, so correct it if you can. Uh, last night I was watching uh, uh, um, uh, TCM has been doing this, uh, some stuff on Dora Stay, who is I think is just so tremendous. But one of the beautiful things about her, aside from her talent, her gifts, her presence, everything, was her love uh, for animals and what she did for animals in, in her life. And that could, the Dora Stay Foundation continues. But also, she when she was doing her television shows, she she paid really 
serious attention to the way people around her were treated. And that made a difference to her. And so I, that's, that's important. That, I feel the same way. Uh, I like to be treated properly myself. And I like to see everyone else treated properly as well. It, it, that's, that's, to me, is the way we should all be all the time. We're going to add in this other incredible uh, tidbit or golden gem about what you're doing in the world, George, is you are jewelry making. Are you still doing that? Oh God, I forgot about that. Yes, I I am. I have, I have a, a website and I sell stuff on on my website. Um, uh, yeah, it started as a hobby. I, I've lost track of how many years I've been doing it, but um, thirty years or something like that, maybe more. Uh, it started as a hobby, and uh, I really love doing it. And just you know, uh, to to cut to the chase, it, it became more than a hobby. I, I I was working with the. I found my way in the manufacturing district in downtown L.A. and accidentally through somebody that I was working. I met a Japanese distributor who had seen my stuff and wanted to represent me, which he ultimately did and has been doing all this time. He, he sells my things in in Tokyo, so it. it I, I wasn't. A, pushing to get somewhere but i got lucky again with for example with my distributor and so on and, and people um, happily liking some of the things i made so it became uh, a, a small business but something i, I really like to i've always loved and i think we all do uh, i think everybody has a hobby of some kind and mine was i had different hobbies over the years i love painting and but i jewelry making was just uh, quite terrific i really loved it because i loved being able to make something and once you make it you can hold it in your hand it's and you can feel it you know um so uh uh, again, jewelry making. I'm still into that, and have been for for quite some time. And then the other thing is um, uh, now and again, I, I'm called upon to uh, give a talk. Or it, it's, it, in recent times, it's been connected with the book or at book signings and things like that. So that has taken up some time just in this last year. But prior to that, I wasn't. Um, I, I I don't I don't remember myself looking for work as it were. It's just that interests change with time, uh, and I think that's healthy and that's 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 a good sort of evolution, you know. Who would you like to give a shout out to, George? Say that again. Who would you like to give a shout out to? A shout? Yeah, a shout out. Who would you like to give a um, a thank you to? We call it a shout out, but who would you like to give a thank you to out there? Your mom, oh. your dad. Who would who would it be? Oh boy, I have I have so many people I've known in my lifetime that I would love to give a shout out to. It's just been so so uh, great and to work with and meet and so on. But uh, uh, Jerome Robbins, I would love to give a shout out to Jerome Robbins because <laughs> I think thanks to Jerry. Uh, I think it was Jerry who cast me as Riff in the London Company. And I I, I don't know this. I just saw it's just my feeling. It's a guess that it was Jerry who cast me as Bernardo in the film. So I have a, a, a never-ending shout-out to Jerome Robbins, not just for casting me, but for just the great opportunity of being able to work with this amazing man. I love that. Uh, George, thank you for being with us here on Live on Air with Stephen Cuoco on Power 98.5 Satellite Radio. And I want to thank everyone that um, are tuning in on the iOS or Android app, on the Power 98.5 Satellite Radio website, Alexa, and our other uh, platforms where we are streaming, such as Streamitter, Streama, MyTuner, Live Radio FM. For all things George uh, Shakiris, go to George, and then that's J E or G E O R G E C H A K I R I S dot com. You will find his jewelry there, uh, press, uh, his blog, photos. Um, a big thank you to your representative, George Harlan, uh, for putting yeah, this all he's together. Great. He's fantastic. Yeah. Um, he's, he's great. Anything by, else? By the way, just just one last thing. Yeah, please. Uh, I think in this 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 not this but this uh, gender thing, I have always I don't know why, without thinking about it, have always respected people's privacy. I don't have I'm not curious about that people that way, and I think now 
there's a, a lack of respect uh, to some degree in people's uh, privacy. I, I have I have no reason or right to know anything about somebody else unless they want to tell me. You know, I don't. I don't. It's strong, it's strong for me to be curious and, and and intrusive in somebody else's life. I would never do that. George, do you think maybe because of social media we know too much? I, absolutely, yes, and and yeah, because it's uh, social media has given people something to do with their time, and so and it's time not necessarily well spent, and and it takes people in directions that you know it, it's it gets complicated and unnecessary and and uh, not helpful, not helpful really. It's good for us to be educated and informed, but not. Uh, have friends that, uh, in, you know, in all parts of the world who we will never know or ever see, and they can't be friends. Uh, so it, it, it is a, a less uh, interesting and, and a, um, what um, a meaningful way to be a friend and to have a friend because you, to, uh, friends uh, are in person friends, and and you can I know a few people I suppose by phone in another way, but but social media I think is probably helpful in in some ways and very much not helpful in other ways. Yeah. Do you think or believe that maybe social media one day is going to just collapse and just? Be its well, own worst uh, enemy. I I think it could be because you know even even a thing like that things change. We don't know what is, technology changes constantly, uh, and so I, I think it's possible that that could uh, something else could take over and and, uh, and uh, t- get people's attention, and they'll it won't be social media; it'll be something else. So social media could perhaps take a back seat, and something new will take a front seat. Uh, so that's change, and that's that always does happen. But um, I like I I just wish that anything uh, the with the internet that um, the word respect could somehow. Uh, uh, be <laughs> on, on everybody's mind and not just because uh, you know this thing uh, we hear it all the time there's no privacy anymore uh, and that's that's unfortunate because uh, uh, so so and but I think social media could perhaps eventually as I said take a back seat and something new will take over and hopefully it won't be something worse it'll be something better I want to give you a big, big shout out of, uh, once again, a happy birthday, September 16th, will yeah. be your birthday. You will be 90 yeah. years old. George, wow. yep. yeah. it is an honor to have had you on here today with us. Thank you. I've just said, I, I just really have loved uh, talking to you. Thank you. Well, you're more than welcome to come back anytime. We can maybe we can do a, a happy 90th birthday celebration show. Yeah, why not? That, that would... That'd be terrific. Thank you. <laughs> uh, George Shakiris, everyone. George Shakiris is an American actor. He's best known for his appearance in the 1961 film version of West Side Story as Bernardo Nunez, the leader of the Sharks gang, for which he won both the Academy Award for Best Supporting Actor and the Golden Globe Award for Best Supporting Actor for Motion Picture. George, I hope you have a great day out there. Enjoy the sunny California air and sunshine and everything else that goes with it. Uh, Please give and share uh, with Harlan our love and support. You've got my direct number. Keep me posted. Harlan, if you're listening... Uh, keep me posted I, you know, of what's going on. And whether you have anything happening or not, George, would love to have you on any time, even to get yeah. your thoughts on something that maybe is happening in the news or happening in the world. And you can shed some really, really great light and, uh, you know, points well, of view a- that we need. Uh, yeah, yeah. The conversation. Thank you so much for that. Uh, I've really, again, I, I really enjoyed my time with you because uh, I we have covered some things that I, I don't normally get a chance to talk about. So thank you for your for your questions and your your interests. You know, you're welcome, George. George Shakiris, everyone. Thank you for tuning in to live on air with Stephen Cuoco on Power ninety eight point five Satellite Radio. 
from here and all around the world, I'm Stephen Cuoco. Have a great and most joyous afternoon. For all things George Shakiris, you can go to his website. He's got a gorgeous, uh, amazing jewelry for purchase. Uh, take a look at that. Uh, George Shakiris. That is George and Shakiris is C H A K I R I S dot com. Talk to you soon. Let's connect.